What? Just do animals. All right, in awesome. a few months, <laughs> in a year or two. <laughs> We're going to leave that one alone. <laughs> <Let's>... <laughs> All right. Hey, family. Uh, welcome to our NHL and Q&A on Friday. We are so happy to have you guys and gals here with us. We're going to answer your questions. Uh, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, make sure to use the comment section. So Larry here is going to take care of you all and get it over to us. Robert uh, has seven kids. Bro, that's a lot. You, for those of you that missed it, uh, we were just talking about um, their gray hairs and they're attributing it to their children or and or animals uh, combination thereof. So I don't have any yet, but I'm, I'm also younger than them. So I'm sure my time will She's come. She's like 22. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm like 25. If I'm 22, then I'm I, like 28. If I'm 22, then I had Jaya when I was like one. And whoa, that's whoa, hey, like look, really whoa, that's not. Personal. That's way personal. I don't even think that's possible. And that's up. scary. So let's not go there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we are here besides, you know, to give you some laughs and, and be jovial with you. We're here to help you with your Kung Fu, your martial arts, your health and wellness journey. So if you have any questions for us, let us know if you want to know more about NR Shaolin, how to get started, what being part of the membership is like. We're here for you to help you with that too. If you're already a member and uh, maybe you're having a hard time finding some specific training, let us know. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm CJ Jamie. I'm your host and I have Sifu Larry here. Sifu Larry ran away. Sifu Larry ran away, but he will be the one helping you. He was the one that was just here a moment ago. And I have Sifu Fu who is here to answer all your Kung Fu questions. So um, we do have a couple questions that came in beforehand. So I'm going to go grab those while all of you are figuring out what you want to ask. Um, real quick, I'm going to give a shout out to the people that I see online. Currently, we have Albin, Caleb, Catherine, Curtis, Douglas, Melanie, Michael, Rick, Robert, Russell, and Steven. So welcome all. It's so good to see all of you on here today. Um, let's see. If you are on Zoom with us, please make sure to use the Q&A section when you're sending your questions over. Not and comments. Not comments. But if you're on YouTube or Facebook, use the comments, OK? <laughs> We had one time uh, on YouTube, someone was like, I don't know if I'm on Zoom or not. If you see that you're on YouTube.com or Facebook.com, that's where you're at. You're not on Zoom, okay? You'll know if you're on Zoom. All right. <laughs> so let's see here. Um, Melanie says, I'm graying too. Now I know I'm a, a, a good company for four girls, by the way. God bless you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Robert, uh, also known as Robert Taylor, depending on uh, where you guys see him at. Um, he's got seven kids. And um, <laughs> Rob says, just for men, seafood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> let me see what questions that we have in. Uh, seafood said that on our last webinar, we had a question. Was that on Tuesday's webinar? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. Think so. Yep. All right, let me see if I can find that and we will cover that one. one did, yeah. So that was, where are we at? Those are our videos. Let's see if we update. Am I in the right place? Just go to YouTube. Just That's go to where YouTube. I'm at. Oh, I see why it has me in the wrong one. That's why, okay. I'm not in the right place. That's why I was on inner shell and I was like, this doesn't look like the right spot because it's not the right spot. So give me a moment. I'm going to pull that up. All right. So there we go. There's our Tuesday Q&A. So let me see what question we had come through. And we'll get started with that one. Okay. So Scott sent over, he says, do you find dynamic tension important with Kung Fu? What does dynamic tension really do for your body? And what are the mental and physical rewards to Kung Fu training? Well, any training has a, 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 a mental and physical reward. Uh, Reward, not worth like <laughs> Reward. Uh, dynamic tension is very good because it builds up the tendons. It works on stabilizing muscles. Um, it's, it's very good for the body because it, it actually, muscles wear and tear and tire out much faster than tendons do. Um, studies have shown that within 30 seconds of stress, if you strain your body, half your energy is already gone when you, you strain the muscles. So uh, tendons, they actually last a long time. They, 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 you can summon tendons upon will muscles or not. It needs resistance to stimulate full muscle control. Whereas tendons, you don't need resistance. You can actually just lock up. So it's much better to train the tendons. Uh, Bruce Lee always said big muscles are only good for what it took to get them there. So basically how does someone get big muscles? You lifted weights. That's really what it's good for. Um, to get power, you know, you need acceleration and you need focus. You know, you don't need to overcome a force. You just need to know how to pierce a force. So uh, tendons are very good for that. Uh, like I said, any training, physical, like cross training, aerobics, 
you know, they're all beneficial because it's good for your health. Gives you more energy, you have more control, you have more better balance, all that stuff. You know, anything you think that's positive for you, it's it's really good for you. As long as you properly train, you know, there's improper training. You know, you can go to the gym and live for five hours and you can wind up tearing your muscles. Uh, you can wind up having a long time recovery. There's a, a way to do things right and then there's a way to do things wrong. Just make sure when you train, you do it right. Don't be in a rush to to go fast in terms of like, I want to get stronger, so let me just lift heavy weights. You know, your body has a certain rate of growth. And no matter how hard you try, it's not going to go faster. So lifting more weights harder does not mean you're going to get stronger. There's only so much you'll grow. Your muscles need to repair. They need to tear down. They need to repair and build stronger. So uh, take your time. No rush. Uh, you know, when I started, I was young. I did 50 push-ups, you know, and I worked my way to 500 push-ups. So, but that took me like years <laughs> to do. I didn't do it in, in about a month. Say, I, I got to get this much. It took me a while, but once I got there, I'm conditioned because I've been doing it for years, doing it. Um, so uh, there's a proper way to do it. Don't rush yourself to training. Training takes time. So training longer helps you to get a little bit faster. So even though you put a lot out, you only get that much little when it comes to growth in your training. So take your time. Don't worry about it. I tell my students all the time, you know, Bruce Lee always say it's a journey. It's not the destination. It's the journey. So enjoy the journey. Absolutely. Enjoy the journey. So, um, seafood Larry sent over from Sean on Facebook. He says, out of curiosity, which Sifu is in the William Chung, or sorry, which Sifu in the William Chung lineage did you study with? Well, I, I don't even want to talk about the William Chung lineage. I, I'm not, um, liking it. So I don't even want to comment on right, it. Right. We don't represent I, it. That's yeah, why we don't so, talk about like, that's where we don't, because that's not where our Wing Chun's from. So yeah, our Wing Chun is mainly from the no knowledge system now. Our Wing Chun is very different from most people's Wing Chun. Uh, a lot of people get very strict into Wing Chun, like it has to be this way, it has to be set this way. We don't. We go by the energy, the way it feels, because every punch is going to be different because of the person's size, the way they strike. So saying you have to have your elbow this far, your hand has to be this far. It's specific. Mm -hmm. It's it's made for a specific type of punch, and it works like for Wing Chun fighting Wing Chun. That's why a lot of times you see a lot of Wing Chun get defeated by boxers because it became too restrictive, rigid to be, it has to be this way, it has to be this way. It has to have the ability to adapt because no two fighters are the same. Mm -hmm. So their punch is gonna feel different. The way they arc their arm, the way their angle is, the way the reach is, the body size, the amount of force they put, whether they throw their shoulders in it, whether they turn their hip into it, where they step into it, or a little bit of everything. You have to have the ability to adapt and that's what you know, we're all about the energy control to adapt to change of energy. If you can't adapt to energy and you become stagnant, then it only works on that specific type of punch. Right. And that punch is not meant. It's going to fail you. For a, a great example, I could say is tandars. When people are doing one challenge, they're taught to, to do a tandar like this. Um, you find that when you fight a Muay Thai guy or a boxer guy, those punches go right through. Okay. And there's a reason why for that. And, and it works in Wing Chun. Like you, you do a hook punch in the Wing Chun world and you find that you can stop it very, very well. But then you fight a boxer, that punch just slips right through. And there's a reason why. Um, but you can't become rigid. You can't become too um, focused on it has to be this way. It can't be. You need to follow principles, not rules. Remember that I heard that saying rules are made to be broken? Okay. Rules can be broken. They can be changed, but principles don't. And for example, five plus five is 10, seven plus three is 10, eight plus two is 10. Sometimes you need to do eight plus two. Sometimes you need seven plus three. Sometimes you need to do five plus five. It depends on the punch. But in the end, if you do the principle and that, that you know, mathematics is a principle, you follow the principle, that'll get you there. But sometimes five and five is not the right answer in terms of the way you need it. You say, uh, yeah, I need to get to 10, but I need one to be greater than the other. So you know what well, I can do six and four, seven, three, you know, that type of stuff, but you can't do five and five because not one rule is greater than the, or not one number is greater than the other. So that's really the thing. You have to follow the principles behind things, not the steps behind things. Uh, dancing is a great example. When you listen to music, you have 10 people dancing. They don't all dance the same. There's different steps, but they follow one thing. They follow the beat to the music. They feel the flow, the feel the music. And so somebody can dance this way. Somebody might dance this way. Somebody might go across this. Everyone's got their own little way of dancing, but the underlying principle of every dance is that beat, the rhythm that they feel. And that's how they dance to it. Same thing. You follow principles, not rules. Rules are not... Um, uh, uh, definite. It's not always constant because variables change. And so you have to follow the principles 
and adapt to it. And the rules will change based on that. So that's what you want. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so Curtis, um, I'm going to answer part of this uh, first part of this question because I, I you must not have received my email uh, to you a couple of days ago, Curtis. Um, but he said, last week I heard about Nodak Na Tai Chi. Uh, who is this open to? He says, I am a junior member and I assume I'm not eligible. Uh, yes, yes, you, you are. are. Uh, that I don't know if you're talking about the seminar and or the training. So the, in the training hall, just go to our Tai Chi section. That is all of our, our stuff. So a lot of people get confused because just because it doesn't say no Tai Chi there, they're like, oh, does that mean it's not no Dak Na? No, it is. Everything that we do on our site is based on the no Dak Na principle. So whether you're learning our Wing Chun, our Chin Na, our ground fighting, our women's self-defense, our core training, our Tai Chi, our Qigong, no Dak Na is always applied to all of it. So you never have to go like, it's not a separate thing. It's all inclusive. It's all a part of it. And if you're talking about the seminar, Everyone's invited. You can. You don't even have to be a member to come to our seminar. So you are good to go on that part. And go just ahead. remember, no deck not is not a style. It's a system of yes. energy, which can be adapted to any anything martial arts. Any. It's principles of energy, which is why I just mm -hmm. reiterating what I said earlier. It's about principles, about understanding mm -hmm. how energy works and applying that to any style you do. You know, style is just what man made up. Energy is what God made. Yes. Yeah. You understand? So, how you go about it? Styles is again mixing numbers. Principle is energy. That's that's what you want to follow to. So no deck now is about the system of energy. And so you want to follow the energy uh, in terms of eligibility of where you can go. Of course you want, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I've said this before. What makes the difference between a master and student besides the knowledge? Now, if I passed all my knowledge to you and you learned everything I learned, what still makes me better than a beginner? And it's, it's not that I know more because if I gave you all my knowledge, what separates me from beginner is the fact that I can do the technique at a much faster, faster rate, rate at a yes. higher pressure. More That's all. That's why students can become masters because they can learn it. It's just mm -hmm. the difference is, is it takes them longer to do the technique. Right. So by practicing though, what took them two seconds takes now one second, which takes half a second becomes instant. That's the difference between like a master and a student, not the knowledge. Like I said, if I gave you all my knowledge in the world and you didn't practice it, that's the only <laughs> difference. Okay. It's me being able to form it at a higher speed and handle it at a higher pressure. That's the difference. So come because we're going to teach you how to develop that so you can become a master one day. Yeah. And and it's, it's, it's the knowledge I can give you. You know, like I learned a long time, one of my friends when we were younger, uh, they learned, they're like, you know, with my knowledge, I can beat up everybody. And I said, well, you can't. He's like, yeah. He's like, my knowledge, what do I know? If I could apply my knowledge to my physical, I could take anyone, but I got to get my physical to, 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 to be in par with my mind's uh, uh, knowledge of how to control and everything. So we're here to teach you, but we're also the, 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 the website to teach you and help you feel the seminar is going to help you really understand the feeling if you don't have someone to work mm -hmm. with. So also, cause we're there, we're going to give you a reference. Now, if you can really start to feel how the energy works, you can go home and go, now I understand yeah, what now I'm looking for. Now I know I'm going to be able to build on this. And so for those who don't get it right away, the seminar is there to help you find that. We're going to hear, we're here to give you that energy control. A lot of people don't have it because most people feel force control and they think that's energy control. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Force is just basically movement to a direction. Control mm -hmm. is learn how to control that direction. So, so uh, no matter what the force is, and that's what we're trying to get you to do. Um, so uh, you're going to learn to push hands. You learn structural integrity. You learn how to control the energy. You learn how to bring it through your wrist. You're going to learn how to feel the energy. We're going to do pressure testing for you. Uh, we're going to basically teach you how to feel your energy. We're going to, I'm going to do the form. I'm going to show you how, what right is. And then I'm going to show you what wrong is. I'm not going to tell you it. It's your job to see it during the seminar. We're going to teach you what right and wrong is so you can get to understand, but I'm going to do the form and say, what did I do wrong? And it's your job to write it down and say, oh, he raised his shoulders. He pulled his energy back. He slouched you. Uh, he, he leaned a little. Like, this is what we want you to understand because we're not trying to give you a fish. We're trying, trying to teach you how to fish. And yep, that's yep, yep. really what our goal is. We want you to, to be able to take your knowledge and then actually grow and expand on it on your own because you have certain principles of understanding. You can build on that on your own. And that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to get you to mimic us. That's not the goal. That's not, that's not really learning. That's just following. That's what makes you stay the student. The master, like the difference between a sous chef and a chef. <laughs> right. Sous chef follows what the chef says. The chef yes. is the one who makes food and says, I'm going to make it this way. This food tastes better if I make this. A sous chef says, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. 
We're not trying to get you to be a sous chef. We're trying to get you to be the chef. Right now, you're a sous chef, but our job is to get you to become the chef by teaching you how to do it. There you go. We're going to help you learn how to fish and be the chef. All right. Um, for those of you that are, are interested in the seminar, uh, we do have some spots available, but I do need to know like in the next couple of days if you are coming for sure so I can get all the, the hotel uh, information set up with them with the number of people that are coming, all that fun stuff. Just go to enterschellen.com forward slash seminar. If you can't pay it right now, just choose the payment option. Like I had uh, one brother that uh, wasn't going to come because he um, he celebrates Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And that's ne- this up. Well, it's a starts this weekend and it's through next week. So he didn't want to make any financial transactions. I was like, it's all good. Just you can take care of it right after that. That's fine. Just let me know. So we're, we're not like some major corporation where we're like, you have to do this by this and whatever. If you need some extensions or whatever, we're here to help you just be honest with us and upfront and we'll work something out to help you get there. Um, Let's see real quick. I think there was a couple other things that he said that I wanted to cover. So he says, um, I'm new. Uh, this is Curtis again. He says, I'm new to push hands and just found partners this week to play with. So I studied as much as I could this week. Awesome. That's good. Uh, but I have questions about the following. What is sinking energy and what is fajing? What is the difference between song and relaxing as far as push hands is concerned? Go ahead and answer the question. Okay. Um, sinking. I know what fajing is. Sinking is, is enhancing the root. Okay. It's lowering the center of gravity. But remember this, sinking does not give you root. Rooting must be present for sinking to, to uh, apply. Um, right. Are you going to? Sinking will make your rooting stronger, but you have to have the root first. Okay. So remember, sinking doesn't give you root. It only enhances it if you have it. So that's, that's what sinking does. So it gives you more power to, to, to stay into the ground. It's like a tree with deeper roots. It's harder to mm. push it because it has deeper roots. Uh, it's the same sinking makes you much more uh, powerful. You can push harder and not feel like you're going to go backwards. Uh, so if you have a guy more resistance, sinking can you create more force. But just remember this at the same time, you don't need to push harder against someone pushing harder. You can turn his energy. Push hands is not about pushing the guy. It's about controlling the guy. So um, I was just telling my student, like, I don't like the name push hands because it gives the people a mindset like you're trying to push him. Right, right. You know, it, it should be pushed through hands. You're trying to not push the guy. You're controlling the guy through the hands. So for me, it's more like control hands. That's really what you want to put in your mind. In. So it's not always about pushing. It could be turning him off you. Mm-hmm. Because if a guy's 280 pounds, just putting his body weight on, <laughs> there's no way you're going to push this guy back. He's got too much committed energy. He's got a lot of mass. So you dump him. You turn his say, energy. Yeah, uh, you can convert his energy over and bring it back to him. But you don't try to push him. It's a wrong mindset. Push hands is not about trying to push the guy. It's about controlling the guy and not letting him get the energy into you. Your object is always turning the energy back to him. So if you're trying to push him, you feel this energy come out. It's because you're going against force. You're not going to learn how to manipulate force. No one should be able to feel like they can put the energy in you. They can put the energy towards you, but never into you. It's a difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in terms of what is fajing, fajing is the winding and unwinding the body, the twisting and the curving of the waist and the wrist together. Like uh, taking a towel and you wring it, as you keep twisting, or rubber band is a great example. You, tweet, you ever have those hell, uh, uh, planes with a rubber band, mm-hmm. you twist it, twist it and you let oh, it, and it unwinds? That's what fajing is like. It's winding the body one way to ex- release it to explode another way. So this is like a fajing where uh, she's pushing me, let's say. Uh, so let's say she's yeah. here. So I, it's like me pushing. I can wind up this way and draw the energy out. And then, and then return that back. That's what fajing is like. It's the ability to turn energy off to create uh, potential energy to kinetic energy and then turn that energy back to you. Um, like a whipping motion. Yeah. What's the difference between song and relaxing? I don't know what song is. <laughs> what, what do you mean by song? Sifu Larry, do you know? I'm sorry. Song. What's the difference between song and relaxing as far as push hands is concerned? Huh? I thought so too. I don't know what song is. Well, I don't know what you mean by song. Maybe it's a typo error, but I don't know what you mean by song. We'll I'm have, thinking we'll music. Have, we'll have Sifu Larry look that up just in just in case, and then we'll come back to that um, after he looks that up. But for just us. just to give you an understanding of push hands, push hands. Well, like, song and relaxation is the same thing. It's the same thing. Song and relaxation. In okay. Tai Chi. I didn't know what he meant by that, but it's it, push hands and Tai Chi. It's not about relaxing alone. Everyone talks about. You know, you got to relax. It's not that alone. It's one half. It's only yin. Uh, yin. It's not yang. Right. There has to be tension in terms of structure, not resistance. You have to have 
structural integrity. And structural integrity is basically, I say, the manner in which you hold yourself without straining. You can feel stress, but you cannot strain. That's what having that yang part. It's creating structure. So when pressure gets pushed into you, like she pushes me, I don't just go, oh, I have to have structure in order to maintain contact control. So then combine yin and yang, I have structure where I don't collapse, but my yin is where I convert that pressure that she puts into me so it doesn't come fight. So you must have both. You cannot have one without the other. Otherwise, if you're too soft, you'll be overtaken. Right. If you're too hard, you can be thrown. So there has to be a balance. balance of yin and yang. Uh, I'm actually writing that for our, our Tai Chi notes, uh, <laughs> yes. explaining the Tai Chi. Stuff. I was going to ask you how those notes come. Yeah, yeah, I'm writing them. All right. <laughs> uh, so uh, it, um, I, I want to finish it before this weekend. So I'll get awesome. it all done. But I'm writing about understanding. You know, Tai Chi isn't about doing it. It's, it's, it's about mind too. The mindset you have to understand what you're doing in tai chi it's not about mimicking me you know people say empty your mind do this and it's true da 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 you know you don't want to put your mind under stress like oh i gotta pay my taxes i don't know how i'm gonna handle it <laughs> right. my kids just got praises i don't know how i'm gonna go for it you know the idea is to empty the mind right, but right. there is a focus in the mind okay uh, it's not like empty your mind think of nothing uh the I'm mind saying, yeah, you're breathing your body yeah, the mind the mind wants to feel okay your mind wants to empty so it can receive everything so you're, you're not emptying your mind in terms of, I think nothing, I feel nothing. It's you want to empty your mind so you can receive everything. So you can sense the slight tension in your wrist if you're tilting. Yes, it, it's, it's empty so you can recognize. You ever see those movies like they pour water in a cup? Like, what do you do? It's going to overspill. And they go, <laughs> they dump. It's like, you must be empty in order to fill. And that's the idea. You, your mind has to understand what it is you're doing. And so you have to understand the more you understand principles, the better you'll do your form. So you have to understand what yin and yang represents. It's not about just hard and soft. There's the reason why there's a little bit of circle behind, like a white behind the black, and there's a little bit of uh, black behind the white. There's a reason. There's a reason why, um, like, they are opposites. And yet, even though they oppose each other, they balance each other. There, there's a reason. And so this is what Tai Chi is based on, you know. Um, it's based on that. And we have, if you better you understand what it is you're doing, the better you perform your Tai Chi because of that. And so that's what we're going to be teaching you and stuff like that. I'm excited. I hope everyone else is excited. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Um, Larry Rivera from Leo Graham. I think this is a question for you, Jamie. I like to ask her what your taking is on Tai Chi or Wing Chun. Like which one do I prefer? Is that what you're asking? Um, I like them both but they have different applications. And I think that like uh, Sifu Larry has experienced and from what Sifu Fu has taught is that if you do your Tai Chi, it enhances everything else you do. So I wouldn't say take one or the other, I would say do both because they both have their applications and your Tai Chi is just gonna enhance everything else that you do afterwards. And I don't just mean like in what you do with your martial arts, I mean like your whole entire life. So I say both, not, not one or the other. Just remember it's all the same. It's all energy. Mm -hmm. Really what we're looking for is energy control. That's what you're doing. So uh, you're going to go about a certain way with uh, wind chan and energy. You're going to do about a certain way with Tai Chi. Uh, the reason why I always tell people to take more of the Tai Chi as they go on in the years over wind chan is because people tend to use strength to compensate for the lack of skill. Right. And so we got to get you to get veer away from that. I got to force this guy. And so Tai Chi is a great, great system to actually teach you how to control the energy better. And that's why I, I always try to veer people because Wing Chun is good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking anything away, but, but you learn to connect your body for a lot of people. They, they use strength. Mm -hmm. They, 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 they back up skill with strength. They force it harder to make the skill work. And that's not what we want. We want control without having to use more force. Is there a strength behind what you do? Of course, mm -hmm. there's always, but it's not strength in terms of resistance. It's strength in terms of steering. So we're not trying to add more pressure to withstand force to take it we're maintaining the same pressure so we can manipulate any greater force mm -hmm. on us. And that's really what you're trying to do. Whether, you know, again, that's why we said our Wing Chun is not the standard Wing Chun you see. Right. Well, our Wing Chun is more on controlling direct force on point rather than motion. A lot of people go for motion. For example, Tan Dara talked about before, she swings to my ear. A lot of people talk about pushing the arm. Right. The problem with that is someone comes hot your heart, it's going to slip around. through if they arc. So it's not about trying to overcome someone. I, I've met a lot of Wing Chun practitioners, like they're, uh, they're like one guy I met in my church and he's like, you know, uh, he found out I was a teacher. He's like, 
how do you deal with someone when they're just so strong? Like they, they put their hands and heavy on you. And, they, uh, and, and, you know, I said, well, the reason why they feel heavy is because you're fighting them first. Right. Right. You're, you know, and, and, and the guy, the idea is, is to convert that energy so you can redirect the force. Uh, and his, he said, my teacher told me, you know, I just got to get fast. I got to stronger because the idea is if I can move fast and press harder, he won't be able to build up his energy. And theoretically, that can be true. But the problem is, is right. when you're not faster or stronger than the guy, then what do you then do? Then what do you do? Yeah. And, and that's the problem because now you're basically saying then my size and my strength makes the difference. So someone training 15 years who's kind of like 120 pounds has to go and fight somebody who's 250 pounds to train three years, got the basics and get the gist of it. You're going to have a hard time now because right. just because he's just naturally bigger and that should not be the case. Strength is not a factor. It's unless you make it one, right? Unless you make <laughs> it one, it, it, it's, it's not a controlling factor. Remember, strength is an illusion because you cannot overcome something unless that something must resist you first. So I, one of the sayings we say is don't resist, just assist. Okay. Um, you got to meet them to beat them. You know, you can't, go against them, uh, never go for motion, always go for the point. These are the things that we teach you that helps you to overcome force, to to not make strength a factor because it, it's not. Nobody can overpower you unless first, you know, and listen to the term overpower. That means that you tried to do something and it was more than what you could do. Don't play the game of power or strength. Play the game of conversion because the only way he can beat you then is he converts back. Right. But his strength cannot overcome. Strength cannot be to, uh, 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 arcing techniques. It cannot. It can only be countered. The best example I can say is think of a nail going through wood. Right. It's strong in there, but a claw, more force can pull it out. Now take a screw, screw it in, and then try to take the claw and pull it out. It's not the same. You can't pull it out. The best way to take a screw out is to unscrew it. But the force coming out cannot just rip, uh, pull that screw out. You're going to want to rip in the head off the screw first, but you wouldn't be able to take the screw out. The way to beat a screw in is to unscrew. Screw. Same thing. Someone who puts force on you is going in a line. You go on a curve. That's why you, the strength don't matter because you're turning it off of you. The only way for the guy to beat you back is he has to counter curve you to take that energy back. But there's no way someone can muscle you unless first you muscle them back. So that's what you want to concentrate. That's what makes skill versus you know strength. We want to learn how to control someone's force, not fight their force. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, either or, I say both. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> because I mean, they both have their their merits. For and for they, they anyone who's out. just starting the training, I always tell people, what's your what's your reason for training? Yes. Some people, I don't want to fight. I want to just do it for health. And I would and recommend Wing Chun. I would recommend Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Yeah. So I was like, well, I want to learn how to defend myself real quick. Then yeah, I would say go Wing Chun first. Don't do Tai Chi first because yeah. it will take you longer to learn. And I'm how definitely telling you to do some Chin Na too. Yeah. Like yeah. learn some. Yeah. Basic, well, I'm just saying, like pressure points. That's why we have all cavities. that. But I'm just saying, if between the Wing Chun yeah. Tai Chi, it depends yeah. on your reasoning. People come in and say, "What should I take?" I always say, "What's your reason for training?" I, you know, that's what's your motivation. You want to get healthier. You want to do fighting. You want to do a little bit of both. Uh, you want to be relaxed. You want to take off. That's. That all depends on your reasoning for taking it is what I'm going to tell you what you should mm -hmm. take. Uh, and then from there, if you go, well, I really like it. I want to expand my journey. Then you can go to others. Yeah. And some people say, well, I like to take them all. I say, yeah, you can take them all. Mm -hmm. As long as you can handle training, you can, it's fine. But if you're like, I'm confused, or you know, I'm trying to do Tai Chi, but I do more Wing Chun all the time, then <laughs> it might be too much. It just goes to the Wing Chun. And as you fun. get better in your control, you can expand to Tai Chi. Some people can do it. I, I like teach four different classes and they can take all four of them. That's fine. And some people, are, I, I just, I confuse. And I say, then stick to which right. one you like the best and stay with that. And as you become more experienced and it becomes easy for you and you might be able to expand better because your skill level is better and your understanding is better, then you can grow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So one of our members sent over, uh, Catherine says, Fang Song is a Chinese um, saying that roughly translate as relax, but more like extend, release, open the joints rather than limp. You Perfect. can't be too relaxed. Yeah, don't be too relaxed. And Douglas says, empty the mind and receive and be in the present moment. Absolutely, always. That's a that's a great way to live. Um, let's see here. So Tempa says, hi, seafood. Number one, is there an NDN shallow breathing exercise in dynamic tension form or routine besides a stationary horse stance and hand clasp tension? Um, we do the breathing exercise with the Qigong and mm -hmm. the Qigong. So that's, that's the uh, breathing techniques and the uh, exercises. Uh, in terms of dynamic tension, we have a lot of them on the uh, core training mm -hmm. exercises. Um, 
just if you're like a Wing Chun guy, you can do dynamic tension in anything. It's just a matter of how you do it. So right. you can do dynamic tension doing Song Tao, tense the body, yes, move very yes. slowly. That's dynamic tension. Dynamic tension is just tensing the body and moving in control while I'm holding Right, so tension. you can do that with your forms. Yeah, so you can do it with any form, mm-hmm. any routine. You can do Tai Chi that way too. Uh, you can say, oh, I'm going to do Tai Chi very slow, but tense and bring it out. You could do that. Mm-hmm. You, you know, any form you do, you can change it to be hard or soft. That's up to you to play. So it, it, it's so anything you do. Qigong can, for can, the breathing exercises and then core training area, as well as adding that dynamic tension into your forms and you'll be golden. Um, let's see. Corey Rutherford says, um, Sifu, I'm working on penetrating strikes. My instructor at my school tells me that I'm just hitting the surface. Any tips to help me? When you're striking, two things matter, okay? Speed, acceleration, and focus. That's really what it is. You want to learn how to hit deeper, you have to hit with more acceleration, okay? But maintain the same focus. Obviously, if your focus is bad, accelerating is going to (laughs) spread. The wider the hit, the more the energy wants to disperse. So you have a greater surface area, it's going to be around that surface. It's going to disperse. The more you can, you know, center that point, the less dispersion, the more piercing. So you want to concentrate on your focus and your acceleration, okay? That's how you get deeper. Accelerate with the focus. There you go. Rick says, my right ankle is weaker than my left. I sometimes try to balance on one leg. What exercises can help me strengthen it, maybe with bands? And thank you, CJ, for the charts. Yes, you can do bands. You can do like uh, um, a band. You can put it on your foot and you can just extend your foot like this with the band on you. So you can do this. Uh, you can do uh, put your hands on the wall and then just kind of do calf raises. So you can do this and just strengthen yourself up that way. Okay. That'll help strengthen the calves. It helps strengthen the ankle. Uh, stretch it out too, because if, if your ankle's tight, it can cause you to be very restrictive. So it can hurt you. So stretch out your ankle, pull your foot in. I can't see it, but um, you can just take your foot, stretch your ankle rotation this way, like this. Turn your, your foot in and stretch. You can put your foot down. I, I did this in a video talk about stretching your ankle that way. Um, they help because if you have knots in your um, muscles there, it'll restrict your ability and flexibility. So it's going to cause you to get tight and you can actually hurt yourself. So stretching is very important. Get your ankle to rotate clockwise, counterclockwise. Use the band training to push your foot in. Do cap raises and put the tension slowly. Um, and those things will help you build up your ankle. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the different stretching and stuff that he's talking about, you can do even where you're just sitting. So if you have like an office job, there's a lot of the rotation or even like, you know, pressing up with your toes and stuff like that that you can do. Um, I, for me personally, my ankles and my wrist are a lot weaker than I would like them to be. So I do a lot of the strength exercises that Sifu is talking about just in my daily life. Like I'm, I'm working on stuff and I'm like, oh, my hands are free or my feet are free. So then I, I work on different stuff where I'm sitting, standing, uh, if I'm in line at the grocery store, sometimes I'm like balancing on one leg. I'm balancing on one leg right now. So there's just different stuff that you can do throughout the day and, and take care of it. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, so don't just think about like obviously dedicated training, but also try to implement your dedicated training in your daily life. And you'll notice that you'll have a lot more strength in both of your ankles and also just better balance in general. Um, let's see. Rick said songing the joints. Um, okay. So a couple people wrote about the song, uh, Curtis says, and Wing Chen, what is, um, the si- Sil- Sil- Tao. Tao. Sil- Tao. Okay. It's just a different way of spelling Sil- it. Yeah. Sil- Tao. yeah. Like one's Mu Yat way. One is, um, um, Wing Ting's way. They, gotcha. they, they say it differently. Um, but what is the form? What the basic form of Sil- Tao is to teach you how to drive everything to center line, learn how to go forward with it, be direct with it and learn how to cover the, the, the long range to mid range. So you, you're learning from out here to, to here from like your bong sows, um, your, your jut sows. And so um, you're learning how to basically send the energy out to the wrists and using your arms to support that. So, and again, this is our Wing Chun. This is the no deck now. I, I can't say what other Wing Chun schools do because uh, um, they're gonna have their own differences. We put up videos before and we had people say, no, no, that's not true. But again, that's your version. This is the no deck now version. We do the three proof to strengthen the arm to learn how to drive the energy out to the wrist. Okay, without the wrist, it's in state, it's, uh, unstable. Um, you you wind up missing a lot. You know, you throw in from the shoulders, you wind up missing. If you do your wrist, you're much more accurate. The best example I could tell you is think of holding a spear. Okay, if you would have to hold it on the very end and throw it, it's harder. The weight is a lot on your wrist, and then when you throw it. 
if the tip goes off a little bit, then it goes off an aim. But if you held it at the very tip and you threw it, you have the better aim because you can, wherever you can control the tip, then the body wants to follow. But if you control roll the body on the backside and the tip goes off, then you're going to go off in your aim. Your wrist is like the tip. If I can keep the energy here, I can control and, and stabilize my, my motion and, and, and keep my accuracy much, much, much better, much stronger. If I go from the shoulder, then any instability in my arm causes me to miss aim. And when you do that, you're going to wind up throwing more. Awesome. Thank you for that, Sifu. And uh, now we're going to cover um, Douglas. Douglas sent this in. He says, Sifu, how do I get more power in my straight line punch? My mindset is, um, let me relax. Hold on. Let me move this over here. I'm not going to be able to see the whole thing. I hate when this thing does this. I try to move the windows around and sometimes it cuts things I hate off. Apple. <laughs> uh, my mindset is relax fist until the last moment. Connect with the top two knuckles first, keep elbows in, keep rooted in the delivery. I feel that my waist could do, uh, could be doing more to help the connection, maybe torquing it somehow. Am I on the right track in thinking this way? Thanks a bunch. Yes. On everything except the one account with the elbow. Okay. Uh, keeping the elbows in is not necessarily doing good power. Okay. I talk about getting the, um, driving shoulders, elbow, elbow, the wrist, wrist, the point. Okay. Having your elbows down does not mean you have more power. When I talk about having a strong root, people always think, you know, for your elbows, I have a good baseline. People are always thinking, oh, this is good. No, ha bringing your elbow in does not give you a good baseline. You can have your elbow out and still punch with power. A baseline is having a strong point to drive from that to whatever. So when I tell people, you got to get a good base on your uh, elbows, everyone always tries to do this and it's not true. Um, just like people think sinking down is going to get your, your, your root better. It's not true. If you don't have the root, same thing, driving your elbow down does not give you more power. If you don't know how to drive from the elbow to the wrist. So it's not about bringing your elbows down. It's about maintaining the point so you can drive from there to there. So hook punches are very powerful, but a lot of people, let's say they throw from the shoulders. We go from the three proof. We drive our shoulders to the elbow, elbow to the wrist, and then wrist to point. So we, we, we torque this way. It's much stronger. An example is like that. Now you can't feel it, but you can, she can feel it and she can tell you. So let's say I go like this. I'm going to put my hand so it doesn't slip off. But if I throw from my shoulder, you're going to hold me, okay? okay? If I throw from my shoulder, it gets pressure. So fight me if you can. Okay. So you can say, ugh. Now, if I do it like this, much better much more powerful. It's much more focused. And I don't have to use as much force. I can just drive three prop. I can push my shoulder to the elbow, which gives me my base. Then I'm going to concentrate my elbow to my wrist and then get the power there. So it, it feels like a hydraulic machine. Yeah. You know, there's, there's no give, there's no dying in it. So it's very important that you understand that the yeah, elbow does not have to be down. It just has to be steady and strong to drive any energy that's given from the, the, the torque in the waist, the sinking, the rooting, all that. It, it enhances the shoulder to drive the elbow and then the elbow drives to the wrist. So I don't have to bring my elbows down and in. Just understand. As that. long as the mechanics. As long as you do the three proof, right. basically the three proof. Yeah. Okay. Um, make sure that that's, that's the key that you're doing and everything else is right. Now, don't try hard. I would tell you, just hit and find the point first. Okay. Get That's how you're going right. to get a lot of people. They, when they think to hit hard, they, they throw their strength into it. Forget that. I tell my students all right. Now I'll say, show me the demonstrate the, the snap punch in the air and they'll, they'll do this. Then I hold a pad. Then they start, they, because they think to hit harder, they have to throw harder. No, you're not trying to push the pad. The goal is to put a hole in the pad without getting the pad to move. That's okay. what you should put in your mindset. That's what we call piercing punches. It's like I stab someone. I'm not trying to stab them, make them go back five feet. I want them to drop where right. they stand. That's what our strikes are like. It's piercing strikes. You're hitting to create damage to the point and they'll drop from the damage. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the crazy thing is if you do the punches right, you don't even really feel it on your end. Because you it goes into them, but not right, back into you. Right. If you're feeling it and you're getting feedback, then you're doing it wrong. One of my teachers always said, if you felt a strong punch, you didn't do one because that energy right. went back to you. <laughs> Because yeah. if you stab someone with a very sharp knife, do you feel resistance coming back at you? No, mm -hmm. it all went to him. Now, if it was a dull knife, if it wasn't sharp, it was round, it didn't have a point, it was dull, it couldn't even cut through hot butter, <laughs> you would feel it come back because now it's not going into the person. Now right. that resistance come back to you. 
you got to find that focus, the acceleration. And that's how you generate that power to create the piercing spikes. Hey, Jim. What's up from PA? Hey, Jim, uh, I don't know what part of PA you're, you're, you're living at because, you know, PA is kind of big, but you, you do know we're going to be in Baltimore, Maryland, which depending on where you're at is probably not that far away from you. I don't know. Check that out. I said several members like go, Hey, I want, want to know when you guys are having a webinar uh, or seminar close to us. And I was like, I pulled up their, their information and I was like, um, we're going to be like less than an hour and a half away from you. It doesn't get much closer than that. So I don't know if you even checked it out, Jim, but check it out. I don't know where Baltimore is from you. Cause like I said, he's kind of big, but I've driven like 24 hours to go to a seminar. So I did break it up into two days. Uh, but you know, I'm crazy. And when I want to do something, I find a way, even if it's driving 24 hours. So no, I would. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hey, I would drive 24 hours to go to ND and seminar any day. I would do that. I'm just saying if it's worth it and you know, you're going to get some value from it, make it happen. Um, but yeah, so we, and we actually have lots of, I don't know where you're at, Jim, but we have lots of members in PA. So uh, give me a, give me a shout out uh, via support at nrshallon.com. Let me know where you're at because maybe I can help you find a couple of trading partners in the area. Um, let's see. Dean Carlin says, this doesn't hurt and usually fades away over a few days. Oh, hold on. That was in relationship to what he sent before that. He says, I take an MMA conditioning class a couple times a week for overall health. When I get done with punching the heavy bags, I will have red, I assume blood under the skin when I'm done between the pinky and the ring and to a lesser extent, the ring and middle finger. Is there something that I'm doing wrong? Is this normal or something else? Currently I'm using a gel to help with this, but was wondering if there was anything else that this means. This doesn't hurt, it usually fades away after a few days. Well, it's not wrong to some people, it's wrong to others. It depends on how, what their goal is, okay? But for us, it's wrong because you should be heading. focusing on the top right. two. The reason why you feel see that is that's, that's where you're making contact. Mm -hmm. One of the things I do for my beginner students, I teach them to do the punches, then I have them punch on the jong. I say, don't punch hard, don't punch fast, punch properly, focus on it. And after the 100 punches, okay, I look at their knuckles and I see the red, where the redness is. Yeah, and it tells tell. me where they are. And <laughs> I say, you see how it's really red down here? That means you have either a drop or you're raising your hand too mm -hmm. much on your hit and you're not turning to hit flush and flat. So um, if you're getting that redness, that means a lot of times you're, you're uh, I, and I can't tell what you're doing. So depending on, you might be arcing and creating a, a hit this right. way, like, like you're hitting this way and you're arcing in too much. So you're, you're grazing the bag. The goal is to drive into the bag yeah. and not create a grazing. So uh, you got to look for that. Um, if you're going straight, like you're going straight like this, I'm, I'm okay. but you might be hitting like this <laughs> so down. Right. So you might be doing okay. this again. You might be doing this. <laughs> uh, you want to hit flush. I call it the triple F's, you know, the flat flush feeling. You got to hit like bam, and there's no sliding. Anything you do where you slide afterwards, that means that you actually didn't hit right into the target. You went near the target, mm -hmm. around the target, close to the target, by the target, next to the target, but not into the target. So you got to watch out for that and just pay attention to that. Uh, when I hit the heavy bag, I, I used to just go wham, wham when I was young. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to – because, you know, you get that, you know, I feel powerful, uh, you know, because I feel the heavy bag pushing back at me, and I can feel I can push into it. Now when I hit it, the back can fly. I just go, boom, and I don't have to even follow through and hit hard because I can send all the energy in that single point. Uh, it took me time to, to learn that. But now, like, for example, like, see her, I'm going to go like this. Instead of feeling like I'm going like, like – Whoa. where I feel the feedback, I go, and she feels it because I don't feel the feedback because now I can send the energy to the point and I don't have a loss of uh, contact control. I know how to send everything in there. There's no here and off or and over or turning my arm and throw my shoulder. And I actually felt that not just go inside my stomach, but I felt it go back a little bit into my spine just to let y'all know. And that was like nothing. That was like, what? Like maybe like half a percent. Yeah, that was nothing. <laughs> if that. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was nothing. But <laughs> when, when you do it right, it's, it's you know, remember, acceleration and focus, right? Focus is, is, is keeping the target small, but also, you know, knowing how to land that, that flat flush feeling. Because mm -hmm. you could be focused in a small point, but you can be sliding. Think of a sharp knife. And I'm going to try to stab her, but I stabbed her like this, like, how good is that stab if I go in, but then I turned it off a little bit? I'm not going to go as deep. Right. Deep is driving behind that, that, that handle good, but... into the tip. But if I'm doing like this, I have a slight turn or a slight rise, then yeah, she can feel some of it. Mm -hmm. But most of it's going to come off.
And depending on how off you are, it's going to be how off the energy is. So pay right. attention to that. Make sure that you have that follow through right. Remember the three proof I talked about. Make sure the shoulder drives, the elbow, elbow drives to the wrist and the wrist turns the point. That's how you're going to hit. Um, practice light. You know, like if she's a heavy bag, I used to just practice like this. And, I just, and again, this is light now, but I can do it much faster and heavier. But I used to just practice and feel for like a boom, boom. And I just let my feel my hip, my wrist. And it's all one, not this. This is broken. If you can see this, you watch. You can see this. I go. You see how it looks like my body went, then my fist went after, or I might throw my fist and then my body came in after. The goal is together. There is no difference between my, my waist and my wrist and my shifting. It's all executed at one time. The best example I can say is like, think of a hard stick, like you got a stick. She holds one in, I hold the other. As soon as I hit it, she feels it immediately, right? Because the connection between us of so that stick is hard. So I hit it, she feels it immediately. But it started here first. It just went there immediately because of the connection. Now imagine if there was a spring in there that's very sensitive up to like, you know, like any half an ounce, it'll collapse. So if I hit it, it's going to collapse in until it can't yield no more. Then she'll feel it afterwards. That's a delay. That's a breaking in the connection. You don't want to have that breaking connection. When you hit, everything works together. You cannot see your hip move, then your shoulder, then the hand burst right. afterwards. That's a delay. And that's why you're going to muscle through to make that work. You have to just burst all together at one time, even though it starts from, let's say the ground, you know, we get the energy from the ground because if you were floating in space and like that, you would be hitting you fall back because you don't have anything to go propel you forward. We need the earth. That's why everyone said, you know, you have to have the earth to generate power. You have to have the earth because you need that resistance from the earth to help drive forward energy for you. That's why we, we get energy one of two ways. We do it through rooting or we do it through, through uh, shifting or throwing of the body. You know, that's the only two ways you get forward energy. Uh, so um, we want to find the connection. We want to find that focus. We want to find that timing. All those makes the striking effective. Absolutely. And in that feedback too, like when you're, if you're noticing that you're bouncing back, then yeah, there's a delay. Are completely off. And it's the same thing. A if break. you're working with a partner and you punch them and they don't move and you're bouncing back, then you're doing it wrong. So definitely pay attention to those different feedback signals. Uh, it definitely makes a difference. Um, so Panera says, I have been listening to these Q and A's for quite some time. I recently signed up for a free membership. I'm still working on getting through the basic free videos. Uh, Sifa talks about activating tendons versus activating muscles. I'm not really sure how to separate the two. Are there exercises or techniques I can practice to improve my mindfulness of activating the tendons separately from the muscles? Well, muscles and tendons, they, they tie together, okay? Muscles turn into tendons, so you cannot fully separate them. It's not about saying I do one and not the other. <laughs> right, right. It, it, it's basically getting the muscles to help enforce the tendons not the force that's in front of it. For example, she's pushing me, right? I go like that. I'm using my muscles to push against her. What I want to do is I want to put the muscles into locking my tendons, which creates my structure. So she pushes me, boom, I create the structural integrity. Now from there, if she's too strong, that's where my control is. That's where my wrist comes into play. So you can't separate the muscles from the tendons in a on a hundred percent type of thing, right. but you, you, you train the muscles to back up the tendons. Okay. And the reason why it's like, well, if I'm using my muscles against uh, someone, why didn't you tell me not to muscle? Well, no, you're not using your muscles to go against the force. You're using your muscles to feed the tendons, which deals with the force. So the muscles don't directly go against the force. The muscle indirectly goes to the force. Same thing as our shoulder, elbow, elbow, wrist. Our shoulders don't directly get power to the wrist. It's indirect. It goes to the elbow. It feeds the energy of the elbow, which the elbow gets the energy, which feeds in the wrist, and then it can drive to the point. It's the same kind of concept idea. You're, you're not using your muscles to deal with force. You're using your muscles to help the tendons deal with force. So there's no separation in terms of that. The separation is the muscles aren't to deal with the force. The muscles are to get, aid the tendons to deal with the force. And the tendons don't deal with the force either. It's actually the wrist that dissipates the force. The tendons maintain structure. That's what allows you to keep structural integrity. That's what allows you to hold strong without feeling like you have to fight. Just remember this, your body's allowed to feel stress. It's not allowed to strain. There's a difference. Stressing is feeling pressure, but not fighting to maintain your structure. Straining is feeling the pressure and struggling to maintain that hold. You're not supposed to strain. You're supposed to feel stress, but not strain. And so that's what the difference between the muscle and the tendons. Our, our muscles enforces the tendons to feel the, 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 the stress 
but not the strain. And that's where now, if it starts to strain, that means your wrist isn't doing its job. You're trying to now start to use the muscles to overtake because the tendons can't hold that structural integrity. Uh, in terms of math, let's just say your structural integrity can hold like 20 pounds of force. The guy gives you 30. Your tennis can't hold it. So you instinctively, if you don't know how to control the energy, you're going to now use your muscles to try to overcome it. See, tennis hold. They don't make motion. They hold for motion. Uh, t- muscles try to create motion. Our job is never to go for motion. Our job is to go to point. And that's where the, that wrist comes in. That's where the throughput. She comes in. I hold my tennis. She's too strong. So I can't hold that. So what do I do? I hold my tennis and then I turn my wrist to dissipate the energy. The job of the, the three proof is the arms create structure, to create force, to create integrity, to create drive, to create uh, a power. But it's the wrist job to dissipate anything that comes at you while you create the force to go into that. So that's what you want to learn to do. And again, the muscles are good. Don't get me wrong. Muscles are very good. It just can't be good at using against someone. Trouble. Muscles are designed <laughs> so you can help the tendons. So the tendons can maintain structure. So the wrist can deal with the force while at the same time creating the structure. So hope that helped. All right. Thank you. Uh, so um, let's see from Edmund. Oh, I'm Facebook. sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, sure. But the, the other question is what can I do to uh, help my tennis? Go to the website. Uh, if you're, if you're a, a junior on there. Right, is, right now is, he's an intro member. Oh, okay. So if you um, sign up, to be a light member, you will also get some core training in there. But if you become a junior or above, you will get access to everything. And so is there any specific training you want to refer him to? Well, yeah, I was going to say, go to the core training. Uh, a lot of these exercises are designed. They're all going to help you. It's like going out to the gym. Any, if you're trying to get stronger, if you lift properly, any exercise that you do in there, if you've done properly, will right. make you stronger. So it just depends on your focus. If you want to build up your legs, you don't bench, right? You would do <laughs> squats, you do leg extension, you know, uh, curls, leg curls and stuff like that. Um, but if you're saying, you know, you what can I do for my tendons? arms? There's arm tennis. Training. We have, you know, we have one for core, you know, your body, we have one for legs. So depending on what it is you want to do, um, there, there's tons of videos in there for you. That's designed to do that. Uh, the and we most, say you should work on all the body because you should be even. Yeah, because you can't have, <laughs> you ever see those body bowls are real, real big, but they don't They'll work the legs for over. toothpicks <laughs> yeah. because it doesn't look right. It's not even right. So um, you want to have an overall training, but yes, uh, we have tons of videos to help you develop that tendons you know, inside your body. Uh, and now you yeah. got the opposite thing. You got the women that they're only working on their bottom half. So everything's like really muscular down here, but then they look like they're going to just, it's all over people. Balance. We want balance, 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 yeah. yin and yang here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so Edmund from Facebook says, is the Wing Chun stance too risky to use? What is the recommended stance in a fight or sparring session? I actually was talking about my student about this because we were talking about the fight between the Wing Chun guy and the MMA yes. guy. Okay. Wing Chun works great if you find another Wing Chun guy, because right. I always like to say the Wing Chun is a cooperative system. Like the reason why you do this is because she's going to do this and we're going to touch hands. In a real fight, no one's going to sit there and say, I want to touch hands. Right, you're going to be like, you're going to be like, what are you doing? Here's the problem with holding your hands out there like that in a fight. (laughs) One, you're giving him your range. He knows your range now. Right. You're telling him what your your range is. Don't do that. So that's that's one bad thing. Here's the other bad thing. Which is easier to move? A car in motion or a car standing still? Obviously in motion, right? If you hold your hand stagnant, it takes more energy to try and move it because it's stagnant. Plus... Because your arm's out further, it takes more energy because the lever's longer. So it's more stress on your shoulders. The closer you are, the faster you can move, the lighter it is for you, the easier it moves, the less energy it takes for you to move. So uh, these are the things that are bad. If your arm's out here, that's not a hook punch. Normally, that, then you got to go like this throw. It's too big. It takes a lot of motion to do this. Whereas I'm tight like this, I just go up. I don't have to swing as big, swing as hard. So all these things that, that, that the Wing Chun today, they see – that, that sticks their hands out. You should never do that. First off, if someone did that to me and they stuck their hands out like this and they do one shot, I would just grab their fingers and break their fingers. Just like that. I would just, <laughs> you're giving it to me. I mean, you're, you're literally right, right. right here. I just go, I don't have to go to your face. It's right here. <laughs> but then I can hit them. I would never like yeah. give my hands out to someone so they can see everything I'm doing. I'm, I'm actually giving up like 50% of what I'm doing. Exactly. Here's my range. Don't give them I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to have <laughs> springing power in this hand. It's lost of springing power. That's why people will start throwing their weight. Well, which is faster to move? Just your wrist through your arm or your whole body? Obviously, your wrist, right? The body has more mass. It takes more energy to do that. So why are you going to sit and then feel like you have to throw your weight? It's just, it's just way too much. 
it's it's best to keep your hands tight. It's best to keep it in motion. So when you're like this, I I always play like this. I keep it very tight. And I keep my wrist in motion. I just torque my wrist a little bit. And the reason why is because an object of motion tends to stay in motion. So because my wrist is alive, one. I'm keeping the energy there. So I'm actually keeping the energy through the wrist rather than holding like this and she punches me. Then I have to go like this. That's my arm I'm doing. If I keep my wrist up, then my wrist can turn. I can move that very fast. And that's so, way more efficient. Way more efficient, way more powerful, less energy as well. It's like, how can I have more power and less energy? Because the focus is there. The acceleration's faster. Um, these are the things. And so because I hit more on the point rather than the motion, I get more concentration of energy in a single point. So I don't have to use as much. Just mm -hmm. best mathematics I can give you is like, Imagine if you're giving 100% of your effort, but only 10% efficiency. Now imagine if you did 50% effort, but 100% efficiency, which is better, right? So that's the same. We want to be efficient. So that way when we're at 100% or at 100% efficiency too, we're not wasting energy. For example, I always talk about point control. We don't go for motion. She's punching me. I'm not here to try and get her hands away from me. That's a waste of time. That's motion. I hit and hit. I go from that to that. I don't waste time. If a person comes at me, I'm not defending. I'm counterattacking or attacking. My mindset, if I think to defend, I think to get the energy away from me. So instinctively, I might try to get them off of me. But see, my energy is not going for the attack. It's going for the defense. And what's that saying? The best defense is a good offense. Right. So am I really offending or defending? I always tell my students, offend me. Okay? <laughs> offend me. So if she's punching me, I go in. I'm, I'm not here to stop the punch. I'm here to clear the punch so I can punch. I'm not trying to stop one, you know, we, you know, NDN works on this principle of, of two things stops the person from attacking you. Third, there's a third, but we don't want the third. Okay. Knock them out, lock them out, or they get what they want. If they get what they want, they'll stop. So uh, if their intent is to hurt you, then we don't want that. If their intent is just take your money, I always say, give them the money. It's not worth your life mm -hmm. or risking your life. I should say. So if that was intent, give it, but if they're out there, it's like, I'm going to break your face in half. I'm going to tear you in two. I'm going to make you cry until your mommy comes, you know, um, we don't want that. So you have to follow along the principle of either knock them out or lock them out. So which one is this one? Which one of the two is that? Neither. That doesn't stop them from attacking. So they'll come and get at you again. You, know, you understand? So you either going to have to go into the hits, right? Or locking is hard because you have to isolate. So right. locking can work if you can take them to the ground. But, you know, problem today is, you know, you got a friend coming at you too, or his friend, <laughs> right. it's not really easy to take someone down, especially if they're fighting you and trying to punch you. So the best technique is to get the hit first. Now, if you can lock them afterwards, great, you know, but if I had to choose between trying to lock someone out or knock them out, I'll take the knockout. It's much faster. It's cool. Like this. it's much faster than I go oh, 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 get in there. It's much faster. Plus it's safer for me because I don't have to be in range. What if they had a knife and I'm going in there and they pull out a knife and stab me? I don't know. I'd rather hit them and make them go Ugh, rather than try to get them. Cause that takes hard. Now, sometimes grappling has to be necessary. If they grab you out of from the side, you have to deal with it because you didn't see it coming. That's fine. But you want to have both. You don't have to be like, but striking is your first line of defense. You can see in the MMA world today, Strikers are more winning because they're learning how to fight at the close range, the grappling range. They're, they're doing the ground and pound. Um, before, you know, when it first started out, the grapplers are winning because the strikers didn't know how to strike at that range. But then they developed the ground and pound. And now you can see it's not the same fighting game anymore. You know, striking has a higher chance. I'm not saying it's the best all the time, every time. It depends on the situation. But let's just say 90% of the time over 10% of the time. Kind of like that. Uh, if it came to a grappling situation, then the grappling does help. Right. You know, the anti-grappling or the grappling helps. Yeah. I know how to strike, you know, that those all things. But, you know, a striker can strike standing up or on the ground if they learn. Grappling mm -hmm. needs to have the engagement. The guy won't engage. You can't grapple. So striking can win to me much, much more than a grappler can because grappling requires you to close in. Striking requires just contact. So whether I'm standing in the air or uh, up or being on the ground, I can still strike on the ground. But grappling requires that engagement, that 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 hold. So if a guy keeps backing up and he doesn't want to get grabbed, then the grappling becomes useless. And you can see that in UFC, people don't want to grapple anymore. They stay away. Someone shoots in, they step back. Now the grappling's disengaged. Right. But striking, I'm on the ground, pow, 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 I can still hit a guy. <laughs> right. So um, you want to focus on getting the strikes in, you know, to, to, to do that. Yeah, absolutely. We had a couple of things that came through. So uh, Rick, hey, good to have you on, brother. And Doug Sharp said, you guys are awesome. Thank you. And then Chen says, beautiful explanation. Thank you so much. On what? How, 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 what explanation? 
One of the many. <laughs> <laughs> one of the many. Um, I think, well, he was the one that just asked that last question. Oh, okay. So, okay. Glad you enjoyed that. Appreciate it. Uh, and Colin says, this doesn't hurt and usually feeds way up. Okay. That, that was, was a that long was time the before. previous thing. Okay. We didn't get that one. Or we did get that one, but I didn't. Excellent. You're welcome. You're very, very welcome. Um, let's see. Make things stick to the morning mess. Who's, who's this from? Is this from... Who, who's this Marty Nelson comment from? Is this from a Marty Nelson? It sounds like he's working with someone. Making Marty. sticks with Marty Nelson. Is that who sent it though? Making that's sticks that's with Marty. Whole- that's his name. Making sticks with Marty Nelson. That's his name. Oh, okay. Okay. That's not the oh, comment. That's oh, the his, person. That's his name. Yes, Making the whole thing. Marty Nelson. Okay. All right. So making, we'll just say Marty Nelson. Marty Nelson says, I have a bad back and getting out of bed um risk for us saved my life thank you cc for teaching me to follow my wrist oh awesome you're welcome you're welcome glad we could help now we have some videos for your back mm-hmm. we, we made it um, yes i don't know um, if it's out yet i don't believe that's not so. my department <laughs> i think that because we've been filming so much i think that's probably gonna be out in a few weeks but we do have some exercises that are gonna be the core training uh, that will help as well as i will say um Marty Nelson, if you are not doing Qigong, please start doing that. The 10 basic exercises. We've had so many members um, that, you know, weren't even able to like reach down to their knees, now can touch their toes and all kinds of just amazing, amazing things. So if you're not doing that, that will help you a ton. And also um, being able to do uh, some core training to tighten your core and and to just even properly doing, uh, like, I don't know if you've seen our stuff where we talk about, you know, having your proper posture, highest heaven, lowest earth, all these things will help with your back. So take care of yourself. And we're glad that you're able to get out of bed with a little more ease. So uh, Dane Carlin says, additionally, do you suggest using MMA gloves or should I just use your bare knuckles? Well, it depends if you want to do sport fighting. Okay. Um, Just understand this. Uh, The gloves are prevent you from breaking your hands. So if you're practicing all the time with the gloves, you can hit off and not know it because the glove exactly. stops that feedback from feeling you break your hands. And I was telling my student this before, like if you took MMA guys and you had them fight bare knuckles, I mean, they could accidentally crazy. break their knuckles in a fight and that, that could end it. And the other guy can win because of that. Um, uh, also, you can do more damage too. So just understand, you know, bare knuckles can hurt a lot more than glove knuckles mm-hmm. or glove. So, now I would say- but, the bare knuckles helps because Dane is helping you get feedback to know if you're doing it right or wrong. Yeah. Plus in the street, you know, if you're doing it in the street, you don't have right. Hold on. Let me get my gloves on. But just just remember the reason why (laughs) gloves were invented is because back in the day, boxers broke their hands a lot. Mm -hmm. And so the gloves were invented to help them prevent from breaking their hands. So today, a lot of people wear gloves and if you, have them strike without the gloves they might find that you know you can see you know sometimes people strike like this they do like this like uh, uh. now if you're a bare glove and you're hitting someone along the shoulder and they're, and they're now you could hurt them but you can break your hand in the process now if they brought their arm up and you went down you did this you might break your hand on their arm and and because you're striking like this but if you strike straight and learn how to do that you'll break the bones and you know, again you, there's a technique in hitting when you are not wearing gloves you can throw away a lot of the techniques and that because you don't have to worry about your hand breaking so um if you're training for sports, that's one thing, you know, that's fine. And you want to get used to wearing those gloves. That's what you have to do. So, um, yeah, you can wear gloves if that's your purpose, if that's your intent. But if you're doing it for the street, train. And you could train both, you know, yeah, absolutely. but train bare knuckles in terms of learn how to hit things. Like I hit the jong. I hit when I was young, I hit trees. You know, I would hit, 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 and and, hit poles, and, and poles. I, I learned how to steal after a while. I just, I could pow, pow, pow. I learned how to hit and land it in really good. And it didn't hurt my hand because I conditioned myself to right. do it. Bare enough. And I learned how to hit right. Because if you hit wrong, you'll see your skin rip. You'll see like the swelling at the bottom. And I, when I was younger, I did that. I, I was not as good and control as I was, as I am today. So I used to like, I was like, Oh man, I could see the swelling on my bottom knuckle. You know, it was swollen. I was, and in my head, I was like, yeah, now it's going to get tougher. Now I'm going to, and it was like, no, it's not getting tougher. It's starting to hurt more <laughs> and more because it's not made for that. You got to understand when you look at your knuckles, these two bones here are not connected to the wrist, except right there. These two bones share pretty much that much of your wrist. So that's why these are more prone to break the thinner bones. They don't have support on the wrist. They can break much easier because of that. So these are your, your, your power, okay? Not to say that, well, why does Wing Chun do the bottom three, but not the top two? Now, some Wing Chun say, yeah, you can do top two. It depends on the teacher, okay? But most people teach the bottom three. And the reason why they say bottom three is because when you're going like this, 
Bond three straight. And I'm not saying Bond three is no good. At that level, yes, it's right. very good. It's fine if you're hitting at that level. Once you deviate from that level, when you go too high or too low, you can see at this level my knuckles are locked. But if I'm hitting more to the gut, you can see these knuckles actually pull in and these extend more, protrude more. So when you hit like low, you should hit with the bottom, uh, the top two, not the bottom three. Some people do this and they say, problem with that is yes, it can work. But the problem is, is which takes more energy, which is faster. Right. This is faster. This is longer because it takes more movement of the body. It requires you to throw and drop your body more rather than just turn. It takes less energy. And yet I can still get more power because again, when you look at the anatomy of the, the hand, this is backed up by the wrist. So when I drive, it actually wants to go there more. For me to do this, I have to go out of my way. I have to sink my elbow to compensate for that natural rise and do that. So we don't want that. You know, or not, when you go higher too, this starts to protrude in. So when you hit, it wants to drop because this is, remember, it's supported by the wrist. So if that hits like this and the guy's got weight, it'll come down on you. You need to create a counterforce, which is this. So that's what you want to do. So top two is is really the best way to generate your first hits. And you can do the bottom three as well if it's leveled. But once you – like level to your shoulder at least. Like, I'm sorry. But once you start going higher and lower, it starts to become – ineffective and I, I demonstrate this all the time through pressure tests i had people hit me with the bottom three to the face and they can't even move me at all and then i'll just do that and i'll do the top two and they fly off okay you can do pressure tests like yeah in our seminars we teach you i'll just teach a pressure test to show you hey this is how it works and how it doesn't work in real life you can put all your weight all your force and remember when you're fighting someone it's about fighting the force mm -hmm. right it's about or i would say fight it's a bad word it's about dealing with the force now some people deal by fighting we deal with it by conversion so we deal with the force not by resistance, but by assistance. And so we do a lot of pressure tests. And you can see, like, I can do this. Like, I'll show you. But, and this isn't fake. This is real. Okay. Uh, and now it looks fake. But I've done it to people who are 250 pounds. And it works. It's all about energy. She's going to put her hands out like this. And, you know, obviously, her whole entire body would, would say stronger than my finger, right? I so, so. Uh, yeah, either that, you think I'm very strong and she's very weak. It's one of the two. But if, I, if she pushes me, push it, and I go like this, it starts to hurt me because I'm putting pressure against her. She pushes me again, push me, push me, push into me, push into me. Now you can see it go back to her because now I'm not, and she, she's falling. Well, that's her. No. It's because I'm learning to control the energy, not fight the energy. Right. I'm actually manipulating right. the force that's coming at me and returning the energy back to her, not going against her. And that's the difference. And we, we, again, it all falls along what we talked about before, using your muscles to back up the tendons, which helps support the wrist, which helps you to turn and control energy. I don't use my, my first time I might push and I'm using my muscles, but I'm not using control. And that's where lies in all the problems. Yep, yep. Uh, hey, Carla, good to see you on. Hey, for those of you on Facebook and YouTube, make sure that you like this video and share it onto your favorite social media uh, platforms. Every time you guys give us some like and some love and some comments and sharing, it just helps get the word out there. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, Doug says that lots of info about Wing Chun can be very frustrating. Everyone calls himself it man. We don't. So not everyone. Ha. But yes, it can be frustrating. And it's like any, any system. It doesn't matter. There's all kinds of info out there and that's why you have to really pay attention to the structure and the energy of things and you'll be able to find the good stuff you know what the problem is with people who always uh, say they're kung fu masters like Wing chun master the problem is is they're fighting Wing chun people and i can't answer but a lot of them they, right. they fight Wing chun and they get good and they put the pressure on people and they beat them they're like yeah yeah i'm getting good you know what the difference is is you got to learn how to handle pressure in, in, in this world of Wing chun the people learn how to put on pressure that's great and that's good and that's what you want to do but you got to learn how to deal with it when people put pressure on you. That's where when they fight people like MMA guys, they start to lose because they don't know how to deal with the pressure put on them. They learn how to put pressure on someone, but they don't know how to deal with it when it comes back to them. And you need that. You need that balance of both. You ask, yeah, yeah I got to put pressure on someone. But you also have to learn how to deal with it when they put pressure on you. And that's why you see when champ people break because they never have. So they get this and they start get them off them. Remember, you got to learn to do you know, for us, we teach point control. You have to go offensive or counteroffensive techniques. You don't want to go defensive. You see these Wing Chun guys, they start turning defensive, you know, but when they practice, they're practicing all offensive. And the idea for us is you have to attack. And when you can't attack, you counterattack. If you can't counterattack, you attack. But at no time do you defend. That's where you start to lose it. When you defend, you want to try and get the pressure off you, which means the guy, you're allowing the guy to dictate pressure on you. Your job is to put pressure on them. A good example I always teach is like, it's what we call the receiving hands. 
don't play the receiving hands, play the initiating hands. And the great example I say is like this. If she's swinging with me around punch, this is what I call receiving hands. So I'm bringing my arm up, I'm waiting for it to come and I'm, 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 I'm trying to brace for the impact. What I want to do, bam, I initiate. I create a small burst. She comes at me, I boom, I hit it up and I hit the energy into her. I don't bring my hand up and waiting for her to come to me and try to deal with it. That's one of the mistakes people do. The other mistake is they go for motion. They go and get in the arm away. Don't go for motion. Go for point. What do you mean that is wherever I make contact, she punches me. I push into me. I don't try to push her away. Push into me. I control the point. If you control the point, you get to control the motion behind it. That's the goal. That's what makes Nodak Na Wing Chun different from other Wing Chun because they're going for the motion. They're going for the force. They're going for that. You know, the idea is put pressure. And then if you put a lot of pressure, it brings their energy back. But what happens when it doesn't? Mm -hmm. What happens if they arc the punch and you miss that? So you're right. back on the fact that you can. What happens when you can't? Yeah. 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 We're not here to try to do something that overwhelms them. We're always about point. It's not about trying to overcome them, move them away. Sometimes we can take them away. Sometimes we turn them away. It depends on the energy and how we control the energy. Sometimes if she punches me, right? Let's say I do, she punches and pushes in too much. Let's say I, 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 I do this and I can fail. If I can do this, she pushes it hard. I can turn it. Yeah. Now, if, if I can't, let's say, let's say she's weaker. Let's just say she punches weaker. I could turn and collapse her in because her structure is weaker than my energy control. Now she's so strong. She had a, then I turn her off. I can't evade. So I, I turn her away, but I, at all times I go forward. I go for the strike. I don't go into get it off me. I, I go, I am clearing the path so I can hit. Remember our job is not to stop a punch from coming at us. Our job is to clear the punch. So we can go into them. I always like to say it's, it's not because you want to stop them from hitting you. It's because it's in the way for you to hit them. So I hit her arm to clear it, but I didn't chase her arm to get it away from me. I just cleared the line so I can get in, not so I can stop from getting hurt. My mindset is not defense, mm -hmm. it's offense or counteroffense. This is the no deck now system. This is what we do. This is what we teach you. Change your mindset from defending to attacking or counterattacking. If you can't attack, counterattack. If you can't counterattack, attack. But don't defend. Don't put that in your mindset. You see hands start to flail. If I'm going to get pressure on me, I want to cover. I want to hit the points that's in front of me. And if I can't, I'm just going to go for, for in tight and go in. I'm going to in tight and go in. I'm going to put the pressure on them through the attack. Now, they can counter me. Well, that's where the skill comes into play. Now, you, you get into a set of knowing how to control energy and turn energy and come in and out. Like and that, that's, new, that's the training. Yeah, skill too. Um, so, uh, JP is on. Hey, JP. Hey, JP. Edmund says. What up, yo? Bong? <laughs> <laughs> um, Edmund says, I've heard that a bong sao should not end up in the perfect shape. Is there a good use for it? Bong sao's are good. They have its, its, its valid uh, uh, time to use. Uh, but I think most people don't do bong sao's right. Okay. They, they, they do it with a hard hit. Mm -hmm. A bong sao should not be hit to move the guy's arm away. A bong sao should be hit the point so you can turn him. I'm going to show you some examples of bong sao's. Like a lot of people do bong sao's where it's like, this is a bong sao, but this and take it out. Bong sows can be used to hit the point, really. It's used to pop the arm so I can take her. She punches me again. I can bong sow and rotate. I can uh, punch me. I can do a bong sow over top. Again, of, uh, it's, 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 it's about me controlling the point. So okay. she can punch. I can bong sow this way. Um, I can bong sow from this position here and rotate the bong. A lot of people do a bong so they can say, it's about turning their arm off. Like punch me. This is, the, this is what they say. This is what a bong sows. And that's one. That's one. But the problem with, like, I find a lot of people do a bong sao, they, they, they say, you got to hit the arm off hard. And it's not. The best thing to do is pop it. She punches me. It's always this first. You see, I'm doing this. I hit her arm up and then I, I rotate that. So notice how, push it in. Now I can choose to do this or depending on the energy, I can do that. A bong sao is not from the shoulders. It starts from the shoulders, but it winds up in the wrist. All the things that we do is because of the wrist. It's not because of the arms. The arms do not control energy. They're designed to drive energy. They're designed to create energy. They're not designed to control energy. Too many people use arms to try to control energy. They use it to push someone's force away. They use it to hit their arm away. It's not. It's, it's, we, we, I, one of the things we say in the go deck now is pop it, don't stop it. Mm. 
We don't want to meet them force against force because their force is stronger. It's going to push you. A good example of I'm like this and I try to push her. She does. It can overpower me. So what do I do? I push it. I pop it first because I uproot her energy while I downroot mine. I make myself stronger in that process and make her weaker in the process by popping it. Um, you don't want to push the arms down because you actually increase their strength. They increase their force while making yours weaker when you push down. So we don't do that. We pop it. We don't stop it. We meet it. We don't beat it. We place it. We don't chase it. This is the Ngodak now way. Lots of rhymes help you remember. and understand. I like to rhyme on time. I'm a poet. I know it. I show it. <laughs> awesome. So um, for those of you that are on YouTube and Facebook, um, because we're already running a little over, I'm going to cover one more question and a testimonial that we got in and cover some other stuff real quick. But if you have any other questions, email me at support at and we'll take care of you on Tuesday nights. Even um, YouTube people. <laughs> yeah, YouTube people. Yeah, everyone. Please. Because that way I don't miss you and, and whatever. Don't comment below. Just email support at Shelley. Comment com. below and email. All right, there you go. You can do both if you yeah. want. The comments <laughs> are good. Yeah, comments are good. But if you just have a question, email me support at com. Let me know that it's for that. Or you can go to com forward slash contact and email us there. Either is fine, okay? All right, so uh, San Sandra Haley says, Hi, Sifu, I'd like to ask, you the following question, is it beneficial to be able to lead with both the right as well as the left? And if so, why? And how and when in a confrontation would it be best to make this transformation? Um, you're, you're, some people are born left hand, some people are born right handed. Some people are ambidextrous. So uh, if you're right handed, use your right hand side first. What's natural to you mm -hmm. is that what you want to pick first. Don't pick what's unnatural. You are not saying don't train the weak side. You no, want to train because you want that to be side. natural. Mm -hmm. But listen, you could train your right hand and your left hand equal. If I throw a ball, you know, told you catch one side is going to be down over the other. If I throw it right in your center. Now, if it was like this, like, of course, you're not going to reach over. Gonna, <laughs> to, but if it was straight in your center, you got to take a dominant side first. So it's always going to be uh, the side you, that you want to be. Uh, if you're right hand or left hand, that's the side you want to pick. Um, not to say, like I said, don't untrain the other. You want to train because you don't, if this hand is not going to be used to, to strike with, then this hand needs to be there. Or if this hand's got taken from a grab or something, this hand needs to be there. You have to be comfortable in using both hands, but you will always naturally pick one side over the other. So if you're right hand, you're going to be your right side. If you're left hand, you're probably going to be your left side. So that's what you want. Um, and when in a confrontation would be pick the natural side. That's the yeah. best. Okay. Yeah. And don't overthink it. Like when you get into a confrontation, your body will do what it needs to do. Like you don't have to go, okay, am I using my right hand? You am train for the muscle hand? memory. Yeah. It, it to will naturally to do, do it. Yeah. If you feel energy and you're one of those people who can control energy through the field, you'll naturally do it every time. Yeah. Yep. So don't overthink and, and practice and train both sides and know that when the time comes, you'll use the right one. We always say don't think because you stink. Okay. Right, you have to learn to feel the deal to make up squeal. That's why I like to say. But right now, if you're training, you stink, so it's okay to think. But eventually, you got to go from feel to deal. That's the goal. Okay. So in the beginning, it's okay if you're training, think, because you stink. But you got to turn that to feel to deal to make them squeal. Right on, right on. So I just want to share this. Uh, one of our members, Vanessa, sent this in, and I asked if it was okay to share it. Um, she said, uh, "Last first time night, I'm it. <laughs> yeah, this first time he's hearing it. Um, I wanted to save it to 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 share it on here. So last night, my 78 year old mother fainted and fell while visiting. Doctors concluded that she was dehydrated. She did not get a concussion or break any bones. So we are very fortunate. I'm writing this because the training I received at Enter Challenge helped me in this frightening situation. I was able to lift her off the floor and get her into bed while we." waited for the paramedics. When I started training, I had limited mobility in my arms and legs due to the years, year long uh, back problems, years long back problems. I could not walk for any distance, spent some nights sleeping in my zero gravity chair because it was too painful to lie flat in bed and was on pain management regimen. Over the course of the, uh, the past year uh, that I've been with you all, my body changed and got stronger. Being able to assist my mom last night was the result of all the conditioning, flexibility training, and basic body mechanics information you all provided. I'm so grateful that I found this site and thank you for all that you do. It's truly a life altering experience. So um, I talked to Vanessa a little bit after this and um, basically she's just going through our No Deck Now 101 training program. That's all she's been doing. And she even oh. said that she's taking her time. Like she should be past the 12 week mark because she's been with us for a year. But instead of just going to each lesson that comes after that, because it's a weekly uh, 52 week program, she's been taking her time and not moving on until she feels really confident about that. So I wanted to share for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, you know, she's primarily doing Qigong. Um, she's doing the core training. She's learning the Nodak Na principles because that's, and, and uh, some Ch Chana is also in there, but that's primarily what we teach in the Nodak Na 101 course. And just with that, 
and, and training for the past year and not even training all the stuff she could be training yet because she's staying dedicated and really working on the core principles of each lesson that she's learning. She's able to have more mobility. She's not having problems sleeping as much and she's able to help her mother. So the point of that is, is just, you know, stay dedicated. Um, don't jump from training to training, you know, take your time, work on the stuff until you're competent and then move on. Just because we release stuff to you weekly doesn't mean you have to feel rushed. It's just that we know that we have some people that have been training a lot longer than others and maybe that they can go at a faster pace, but always go at a pace that works for you and don't be afraid to hold out and stay working on stuff. Um, we even recommend that even if you think you know something like maybe you already trained in Silent Tao or maybe you already know the Zhang form or whatever, or maybe you already know Tai Chi, still review what we do because what we do here at Inner is a lot different. And I promise you're going to find information that will refine whatever it is that you already think, you know, so it never hurts to take that time to grow your skill and to be better. So thank you, Vanessa, for letting me share that. I think it's so awesome um, that you're really getting a lot from your Qigong. Um, I've been actually, I think in the past couple of weeks, like every week, I, I think I need to be like Qigong advocate or something on my shirt or something, because I keep recommending uh, to people, um, where Jaya and uh, Kara go to Wushu just the other night, uh, there was a, a brother in there and I've seen him, he's, he's one of the adults that I think we're a uh, similar age or he might be a year older than me, we're really close in age. And he was stretching, he's like, man, he's like, you know, oh, it's just getting so much harder as I age and all sort of stuff. And I was like, well, I know that Master Lee also teaches Tai Chi. So I said, oh, do you do any of the Tai Chi or anything? And he's like, nah, but I've been thinking maybe I should. And I was like, you definitely should. I was like, what about Qigong? Are you at least doing some Qigong? And he's like, no. And I said, do this for yourself. Learn the 10 basic Qigong exercises. I promise you, you're going to find that you have a whole lot more energy. You've got the stamina that you're going to need. You're going to be able to be more flexible. And if you start doing the Tai Chi, like forget about it. You're good to go. So I highly recommend to people all the time. I'm always like Qigong, Tai Chi. <laughs> like I'm just become an advocate, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> but it's where it's at. If you really want to have that longevity, just more energy, just feel better uh, to be able to understand your body mechanics better and just improve your life. Those, those are the ones that you really want to concentrate on. And that being said, if you can make it to our seminar, you really should uh, go to nshellen.com forward slash seminar and register. Um, even though uh, I think on there, the due date was, I think for this week, if you're still able to go, I will work with you. You can get the money to me, even like the Monday before the event, as long as I have it by then, I just need a commitment to let me know, register. You can choose the payment plan and just, you know, give me a little note. We'll take care of you. You're good to go. Um, and also we had another uh, person sign up for our Patreon and become one of our patrons. Thank you. Curtis did. So thank you, Curtis, for that. Uh, every little bit helps. So we're um, hoping that we get more of you involved with that. There's some extra training you won't find anywhere else. Uh, so you can go to Not Patreon. even on Enter Shaolin. Not even on Enter Shaolin, uh, which was kind of hard for us to do because we, you know, we, we want to share. Everyone, we want everyone to, to have everything. Um, and they do, they have all the stuff, but there's just some little, little interesting, fun things that we're putting on there to give you a little different perspectives on the training that we provide for you. So you'll go to patreon.com forward slash enter Shaolin. You can pledge as little as five bucks up to, I think a hundred or something, or, or maybe even more if you want. Um, and if you can do that, God bless you. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. Um, but we'll see you all on Tuesday. For those of you that celebrate Passover and the Feast of Love Bread and all that good stuff, we thank you. We hope you have Happy a wonderful Easter. time with your families and stuff like that. And um, we'll see you all on Tuesday. I, I just want to say, Vanessa, you have a zero gravity chair. I'm jealous. I want one of those. <laughs> all right. If you guys can donate uh, on Patreon some more money, we're going to get Sifu one of those chairs, okay? Um, and, and maybe we can show you some. I'm, I'm getting old. Yeah. My body's starting to wear down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you on Tuesday. Bye for now.